one of my favorite people in the whole world who is coming in to talk to us. And he's going to talk and maybe more. And here's my story. My friend said, Jackie, you need to meet Mark Romero. You need to interview him. He's gonna be great on your summit. And we had a conversation that changed my life. And there are so many ways that you'll be able to interact with him. I cannot wait to introduce him to you. So I'm gonna quit talking. All right, help me welcome into the studio, Mark Romero. Mark, are you there? I am, I am, hi. Hi. So good to see you. It's great to see you too. I feel so, inspired now after watching Barry's bit, I'm ready to start singing on my calls now. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. No, that, that's a far cry from the guy who wouldn't play his music in public. <laughs> Just a little bit, huh? <laughs> all right, so before we give all of the spoilers, Barry, thank you for being you and for being willing to be on the show with me today. I think it, and I said Barry, didn't I? You so did. I did. All right, so we're going to start that over again. Hang <laughs> on a second. <laughs> Mark, before we go in and spoil everybody's fun, <laughs> thank you for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for opening the space up and to have an opportunity to connect. And, and I'm curious to see what evolves out of our time together. <laughs> well, we're going to take people on a journey into a world that you um, were absolutely convinced didn't exist and that I knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. So I know a little bit about your story, just enough to go, hey, um, where do we begin? <laughs> Why don't you tell them who you are now, and then we'll go into the Wayback Machine, and we'll get the whole world according to Mark. How's that? Not the Wayback Machine. Well, I'm a, a master sound healer and and thought leader. I've um, it's like when I was a kid, and there's a little bit of way back for you. Um, I remember other kids wanted to be firemen and astronauts and stuff like that. I wanted to be the wise man. You know, I wanted to to gain wisdom about life, wear one of those cool things over my head, you know, the wise men wore and stuff. And I'll never forget when I said that to one of my friends, he said, no, you don't want to do that. That, that means you're going to have to go through pain in life, you know, which there might have been some truth to that, you know, and um, but that was that was my dream. I wanted to get an understanding of how this thing called life worked and how to master it, how to play it and do the best to enjoy the experience. So, and oh, so I have, I have to ask what happened because you went corporate, right? I did go corporate. You know, what are we told? <laughs> You're supposed to, you know, get a, go to school, get a job, work your way up the ladder, the happier you'll, you, you know, the higher you go, the happier you'll be. And, and I bought into that. That was the model that my father had set for me and went from entry level all the way to CEO of a multi-million dollar business. And, you know, you would have thought I would have been happy, content and fulfilled, but, um, I came home one night and my lovely wife, Dr. Lara's in the hallway. And she just said, honey, I don't, care how much money you're making. I look in your eyes and you're dead. When are you going to have the courage to go for the dream? And I'm like, oh, you know, I immediately wanted to find fault with what she said, but like any real good husband, he realized, what's the point, dude, you're wrong again. Just own it and kind of go forward from there. And she was right again, you know, because I had had this dream of um, helping people tap into their power, helping them to live more empowered lives, to heal their lives, to awaken to their magnificence, and ultimately to unlock their ability to compose the life of their dreams. And um, so I took the ultimate leap of faith and took the plunge, so to speak, and, and began a, a journey that has led me down avenues, including music um, and stuff, which of course we've talked about, I would have never had imagined in a million years. So there you go. All right, you don't get away with that. Okay, so you don't get away with that. It makes it sound like it was easy and smooth and you just went from corporate CEO, big company to wise man. I'm not buying it. 
Uh, no, it was the Tortures of the Damned. Ah, so let's let's go there, okay? Because people need to know the truth. This is not a journey to be um, scoffed at. It's worth it. And so tell them about the and. Well, it's it's hard. I mean, it's like it's you know, it's like one th I tell I tell my clients this. I say, you know what? I go, it's one thing to have a career. OK, having a career and selling widgets, that's easy. But if you really want to accelerate your healing, you really want to accelerate your awakening, you really want to accelerate your evolution, your journey to enlightenment, I guess, whatever you want to call it, you make the shift from a career to fulfilling your calling. And when you go to fulfill your calling, it's going to bring to the surface every unresolved issue, every <clears throat> fear, every uh, all this stuff's going to come to the surface that would have never come selling computer chips. You know, selling computer chips was easy. The first day I sold my very first music CD for $15, I'm like, uh, what if they say no, you know, and all this stuff. And it's like, I remember being terrified about the whole aspect. But no, it was the... It's the hardest journey I ever made in my life because it's like you have a certain paradigm of how life works in that old domain. And when you make that shift, everything that you did in the old domain to be successful became obsolete and didn't work anymore. And so it was really about reinvention. It was about letting go of old stuff, letting go of old ways of trying to do things and realizing it's not so much about doing, it's much more about who you're being. And sometimes we have to go through a little fire, shall we say, to purify the gold. Sometimes we have to go through a little pressure to create the diamond. And uh, I certainly had my share of that. It was, it was not easy. It was the hardest thing I ever did. And I'll end with this thought with this. I remember every Easter, my wife and I, we'd watch the 10 commandments, you know, with Charlton Heston. It's like, I love that movie. That's the only movie you could go to bed at night, wake up in the morning. And it's still on, you know, they, they still haven't gone to the promised land, but I remember she's like going, where are you right now on your journey? And the moment she asked that Moses face plants in the desert, you know, he had just crossed the Sinai and I said, I'm right there because I literally had to break down everything in order to step into the next greater and grander expression of, of who I was. So take us there. What does break down everything look like? What did that look like for you? Well, gosh, where do I start? It looked like getting the letter from the bank telling us that if I didn't get caught up on the house payment, I was going to lose the house. And as a, as a father with two daughters, as a husband, I mean, and then of course we have this programming as men that we're supposed to be the provider and do all this stuff. And if you're not doing that, then you're a failure, you know? And it got to that point where, oh my God, it was like everything that I had built up in my previous career, all gone. I got hammered by the OA thing, like so many people did. Whoa, 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 and, hammered by the OA. What is an OA? Oh, 08, you know, 08. 2008. Ah, thank the you. Economic debacle, I guess we could call it. Thank you. you know? And it's just like, you know, so everything that I had done was gone. Whoosh. Talk about everything I had built my life upon was, was broken down, all of my main belief structures that I had in about political institutions, medical health, philosophy, life, working hard, all these different aspects, they all got broken down. And I realized that they needed to be reinvented. And, um, and I, I would like to say that I went through this change and shift easily and effortlessly, but I really struggled with it. And, and I fought it quite a bit until I kind of felt like life had beat me down so much where I'm like, okay, I surrender. And then out of that, things began to dramatically shift and change. So before we get to the dramatically shift and change, I want to know what the steps were along the way from corporate CEO to having your own CD. Oh my gosh. Well, I think, well, I've been playing music forever. I started playing in high school, but it was my thing. You know, I never 
played to become a rock star or anything. I might have dreamed about it and fantasized about it in the safety of my bedroom at home, you know, having the pretend concerts, imagining my hair down to here and going like that and stuff. Um, but I had played and then right around the time that I had left, I started doing um, I, motivational speaking. That was the thing that I wanted to go do. I wanted to go help change the world through pontificating words of wisdom, right? And uh, that's what I was doing. So that's what I took the leap and the jump into. And right around that time, I had a, a neighbor who was a professional drummer. And he said, Mark, you know, you've been talking about making a CD. Let's make the CD. I'll help you produce it. I'll play drums. I've got a buddy of mine who'll give us the bro deal on studio time. And you know what? I, I had this thing where I wanted to have the experience of making a CD, you know, to go in the studio and all the knobs and dials and lights and microphones and soundproof stuff. And, and so I did it, not with the intention of selling them, not with the intention of getting into the music business. And back then you had to run a thousand CDs to get a run. So here I am, I had a thousand CDs sitting in my garage and I would just give them to friends and, you know, and that was pretty much it. And, um, I was working with a lady who was helping me develop my speaking platform and I sent her a CD saying, Hey, you know, here's, Hey, I wanted to share my CD with you. She calls me up. She goes, what the hell is this? I'm like, Oh, what's my music CD? She goes, you didn't tell me you played music. Well, no, what does that got to do with my speaking? <laughs> she goes, everything. You're doing music and speaking together. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. And see, to me, music was the most intimate expression of who and what I was. And in my past experiences, I had had the experience that expressing who and what I was was not a safe thing to do. You know, I'd been heard, I'd been rejected, been told that wasn't good enough, whatever. And so I came up against a lot of this stuff. So we fought back and forth. And she was a very forceful woman to say the least. And she just said, well, we'll just add the talk with music and see what happens. Well, before I knew it, nobody would call and ask about any of the other safe talks. They wanted the music and speaking talk. So music began to find its way into my speaking at that particular point in time. Oh, I have to know, what were the safe talks <laughs> that nobody asked about again? Well, I was, I, I, I loved golf at the time. And so I was using golf and the metaphor of golf for life improvement techniques. And, um, you know, and then I realized one day, well, I suck at golf. What am I doing? You know, I play guitar much better than I play golf, <laughs> you know? It's like, what am I doing here? So the golf stuff went, went away and, um, you know, all became about music and speaking keynote you know, concerts. Music and speaking, what kind of keynote? Keynote concerts. Keynote concerts. Oh, yeah. now there's a novel idea that would have made you unique in the speaking industry. Which was why Sherry, who was helping me at that particular point in time, said, you just separated yourself from 20 million other speakers. And I thought she was nuts. But lo and behold, she was right. Who would I be to argue with her, right? <laughs> I, I'm I not sure you would be you if you didn't argue. Well, that's yeah. probably true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so true. All right. So so now you you're getting paid to keynote concert. That's kind of cool. When did you decide to actually accept money for a CD? I guess it was right around that time. You know, you go to get hired to do a speaking thing for an association or something. You have to bring something to sell at the back of the room. I wasn't an author or, you know, I, you know, all I had was CDs. So I sold CDs. <laughs> That's what I did. And it's like, and, and it was so interesting because even all these years later, that's, there's a package that's been with me the whole time that still continues to be my number one music package, you know? Really? Yeah. The one that was on that original CD. The original CD became part of that system. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You, you hit it right the first time by accident. You just wanted the experience. Yeah. I did. That, that's really, really cool. Okay. So now there's a shift here. We, we've got keynote concert 
speaker to association selling a CD in the back of the room. Mm -hmm. And you don't introduce yourself as a keynote speaker concert kind of guy anymore. You introduced yourself as a master sound healer. Yeah. When did it go from music to healing? Well, it's kind of funny because Lara, my wife, invited me to come play for an open house at a wellness center. And so I came to play, you know, being thought it'd be kind of cool. And after I'm done playing, the woman that runs the center comes up to me. She goes, oh, my God. She goes, I hear these tones in your music. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, oh, my first thought is, man, she's going to get weird on me. I could just tell she's going to get weird. And then she got like right up in my face and she goes, and nobody can hear the tones but me. And I'm like, mm hmm. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I knew it. I knew it. She goes, let me get a CD. She goes, I know these scientists. They're going to be interested in your music. So I gave her a CD. Hopefully, give her one. Maybe she won't bother me anymore. <laughs> and I kind of went home and didn't think anything more about it. And then, literally, like a week later, I get a call from a gentleman by the name of Dr. Ronald Jones, who was a former top consultant to NASA, um, had served on presidential advisory boards for science, had helped develop the MRI machine, and was really involved in an intriguing study looking at the implications of the toxic chemicals in our environment, cell phones, Wi-Fi, all these different things that are impacting our energy and how they're causing us to be put into a disharmonious state, which is causing stress, which is causing health breakdowns, which is causing mental challenges. So I'm like kind of talking to this guy going, okay. And he goes, yeah, he goes, we discovered frequencies in your music that help to eliminate all of these negative effects of these disruptors in the environment. So I'm like kind of going, okay, I don't really understand that. He said, come to this lecture. So I go to the lecture and I'd never heard of quantum physics before. I'd never thought of looking at myself, anything more than what I experienced through my senses or even the world, you know, through my senses. I thought that was a scope of reality. Well, that night I got quantum energy 101 class introduction um, to energy, quantum physics, and how we are actually these, as he put it, we are masterful, super biological wireless computers that are plugged into the ultimate super internet. And we have access to all of the information, everything that we need to heal our lives, to make our dreams come true, to help positively impact the lives of others, all these different things. And I'm like, kind of going, wow. And then they talked about all the stuff that gets in the way of that. You know, the 80,000 man-made chemicals in our air, food, and water, the countless technology that we've all surrounded ourselves with. And now we've got 5G, 4G, Wi-Fi, smart meters, all these different things that are beaming disharmonious frequencies through our living spaces. And so they're up here talking about all this and they start demonstrating how things we use every day are compromising our energy. So halfway through the lecture, they invite me to come up. I start playing music and I see people's physical energy shift instantly in front of my eyes. I'd never seen anything like it. Quite honestly, it kind of freaked me out. I kind of went home, does not compute, does not compute. And um, really didn't really know what to think of that. And then after that lecture, I got a call from him. He said, listen, we've done further testing. Your music does what we're looking for. We've searched thousands of musicians all over the world, Mozart music, all these different things. It had to do a certain criteria in order for it to work. It had to eliminate these negative effects. And so he says, you know, we want to buy a thousand CDs from you and start selling them. I said, okay, well that I can relate to. I'm not so sure about all the quantum physics and energy stuff, but I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to dive into it. Uh -huh. and, um, so that's how it began to shift. And out of that discovery, emerged a music, a sound healing technology that I utilize to help people to heal their lives, to um, awaken their potential, remember their magnificence, um, that we're all made of this divine energy, um, that we're all powerful beyond nature, you know, beyond, beyond our own imagination, and then to help people to start utilizing that power to create extraordinary results and become catalysts for transformation and change on the planet. There's like uh, a part of the story that you just shared that I'm going, wait a minute. It's, it's like the big blackboard that has all of these calculations 
And to get from here to here in the middle, there was something that said a miracle occurred. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. You're, you're, you're telling this story and I'm listening. I'm going, wait a minute. I'm thinking you're the same man who was at the healing center looking at the woman going, you're about to get all weird on me. And, and you're going to, you know, take, take us a little deeper. What was in the way? What, what did you stumble over? What was the um, resistance to coming into here? Because I don't want people to think that you just was like, oh, yeah, I started studying quantum and it was easy. I'm not buying that. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I have to go back to Lara once again, my wife being pregnant with our first daughter, month eight, first baby things get a little uncomfortable a month eight with four weeks to go, you know, and then at seven o'clock at night, every night, mom would be on the bed. Olivia's in mom's tummy doing her calisthenic routine. Mom's in pain, discomfort. And then one night she goes to me, honey, just come, just put your hand on my tummy. And so I put my hand on her tummy and it was instant peace and quiet. And then after like five nights in a row, she looks at me and she goes, you know, you're a healer, don't you? And I said, don't talk to me about that healing mumbo jumbo. That's the kind of stuff they take you out in the backyard. They tie you to a tree and they set you on fire, man. I don't want nothing to do with that. And then, of course, being married to a doctor of metaphysics, what do I get? <laughs> You know, I think you might have some past life issues to resolve. Well, if you ever want to make a corporate guy, ex-corporate guy, run down the hallway, really pitiful with fingers in the ear going, la, 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 I can't hear you. That's what she did. So that was my resistance. There was no way I was going to get into any healing mumbo jumbo stuff. Music gets discovered. And guess what it is? It's healing. And to even add on to that, I remember one day I consciously said to myself, I am not doing this. This was after I'd been introduced to the scientists. I said, I just assumed turn this off and have nothing to do with it. And literally within five minutes, my phone rings and it's Dr. Jones. What's going on? I said, well, what do you mean? He said, I just detected a fluctuation in your energy. And I'm like, going, oh, now I'm scared. He goes, you need to come see me in the office. So I go sit down, Dr. Jones, and he said, Mark, in life, we have two choices. Either one, you accept your gift, use it for the betterment of humanity, or two, you live a life of freaking misery trying to deny it. What would you rather do? I said, I really like option three. And he goes, what do you mean? None of the above. He said, sorry, you don't have that option. I'm like, ah, okay, I'll step into it. And it was a process. It was a process. There was times I would step into it and then I'd step out and then step back in and then step, you know, it took a little while to, I guess, make the stubborn ex recovered CEO guy more pliable. <laughs> <laughs> I have such a hard time picturing you as a stubborn CEO guy. Oh yeah. I, I mean, it's like, we need to have a slideshow with this conversation that has a picture of you prior to the shift because it's like, I can't even imagine this. Oh, I was uptight, man. That tie was uptight, probably cutting off air circulation, you know, and it just, oh uh, yeah, I had a chip on my shoulder. And I honestly, on this side of everything that happened, I had to go through everything that I had to go through in order to prepare the soil, so to speak, in order to prepare the vessel, because I had a whole lot of ego to work through, you know, a whole lot of stuff to let go. And I'm sorry, sometimes you got to go through life's challenges to start letting go of some of that old stuff, you know, really bringing it to the forefront that, OK, this is not going to serve you where you're going. You can't take that big old ego with you. So it was a process learning, definitely a learning process. Trial by fire in some cases. But, you know, you said something that I just want to ask about because it's an expression I don't hear often anymore. And you said you had a chip on your shoulder. What was that? Oh, I thought I was, I thought I was, you know, the bomb. You know, it's like through my whole career, 19 years in the high tech world, 
I was ace star performer. You know, when I got into sales, it wasn't just top performer by a little bit. It was top performer by exponential levels. And as a result, you know, I think when you're young and still kind of developing some of your foundational beliefs and stuff, hey, you know, the ego gets out of control, you know, and, and that's what I went through. So even, and I think. How did you know you had a chip on your shoulder? It's that expression that caught my attention. It what does that look like? It wasn't until it got knocked off <laughs> that I realized that I had one, you know. Because like I said, those were all things that I had placed my self-worth on. Ah. External things, my bank account, how successful I was. Not only I was the top performer, I was, you know, took a company. I started in my garage in five, mil in five years, we're doing 15 million a year in sales. You know, yeah, I had a chip on my shoulder. You know, I thought I, yeah, I'm going to quit. I'm going to jump into this new thing and I'm going to give me three months. Well, three months came and went, a year came and went, five years came and went, and I'm struggling. And as a result, you know, I realize now it's a good thing that chip was there because if I didn't have it, I probably would have never quit my day job and made the leap. Ah, mm -hmm. got it. Yep. That, I, I now that makes sense to me because I was like, why did you leave that? And, and so, yeah, ego will get us to do some pretty radical things. Well, when you ask the question, why did I leave that was because even with the financial success, I was unhappy. I was discontent. I knew that I was here for something more. Oh. Yeah. And it wasn't just selling computer chips. And so, um, and, you know, I was struggling, stressed out. I'm like, man, it was a tough business. And I'm like, oh, you know, I've got to do this. I've got to, I want to fulfill my purpose in life. I want to fulfill my purpose. I think we all have a purpose. We come here, we come here to express something into the world that is ours and ours alone to express. It's our music. And I wanted to find mine and express it and to bring that forward. So that's, that was really why I left, you know, that was really why I took the leap. I'm, I'm laughing because you use the language of music to describe, you know, the people are the composers of their lives and you express yourself that way now, which, you know, I can imagine that when your music was something that was so personal that nobody ever got to hear it, mm -hmm. that you expressed yourself a little differently. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, it was my thing. Nobody ever got to hear it. And if they did, I'd be terrified. I could speak in front of a thousand people, put two people in the room in my guitar. I became this like shy kid, you know, and, I, and that's because of that intimate expression. You know, it's like when it's that moving from career to calling to fulfilling your purpose, that intimate expression of self, um, you know, because of my past experience, because of some issues I still needed to work through, um, you know, I had reservations about doing that and. You know, but there was always that little part of me. Okay, I'll, I'll do the music and speaking talk. Okay, I'll go play for the wellness center with all the woo-woo people, you know, and stuff like that. But now I can honestly say, you know what? I'm woo-woo now, you know? <laughs> you know, you are just the greatest example of someone who was willing to embrace a new identity to em embrace this, this paradigm shift, I believe is how you refer to it. Mark, most of the people who go into um, this kind of shift really experience what, um, what was said earlier. You know, if you want to be a wise man, you're going to have to suffer. Go through pain, yep. You're going to have to go through pain. You know, they used to say the same thing about artists. You know, that was the belief that big artists had to have had big suffering in their lives. And you don't pull any punches on this. The reality is that if you want to have a large impact on the world, you got to be willing to experience what impact is like on the inside. Yes. Well, and I appreciate that honesty that you bring into the conversation about this. Well, thank you. 
You're welcome. So true. So true. And we all, you know, and we all have the ability because we all go through that. We all go through the twists and turns and the ups and downs of the human experience. And, you know, and it's like, you know, yeah, it was, it was definitely a roller coaster ride. That's for sure. <laughs> it still continues to be in ways, you know, so it's like, um, you well, know, it's like, um, you know what, go ahead and finish that sentence. And then I got a question for you. Oh, it's just like, you know, it's like, um, if we ever reach the day where we think we've learned it all or attained all there is to attain or, or work through what everything, everything that we ever need to work through. No, there will always be more. Life is this constant, expansive unfolding. It's never done and we're never done. So it's like, I'll never forget you. This maybe a couple of years back, one of my clients said to me, I've worked through stuff. You know, I should be done by now. <laughs> And I'm like kind of going, yeah, how's that working for you? <laughs> you know, we, we've got to work through our humanity. You know, we're going to bring to the surface things that we need to resolve and move through and let go of and process through and, and transmute. And what needs to change is our interpretation of those experiences when they arise and to quit fighting them, quit resisting them, quit making ourselves wrong for having them and embrace them and realize that within each of those challenges, they're like rungs in the ladder that are going to take you up to new heights. So there we go. That's a beautiful way of expressing it. And I'm, I'm laughing because my favorite client in the world came to me because, and she put it this way. She said, Jackie, I've worked through, I've peeled back layers, I've released, I've let go, I've even forgiven, and I am still buying t-shirts. <laughs> and I thought, cool, all right. Um, I did not tell her that she would probably have that experience more than once. I just took, got her out of that particular t-shirt shop. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then it was like, okay, now when it comes back, call me. She's like, what? Yeah. It may not. It's okay. It may not. Yeah. Um, but it does. You know, it absolutely does. It's, it's not that we ever get to the center of the onion. The onion keeps producing more centers to get it. I mean, that's how onions grow. You know, they just keep adding layers from the inside out. And, and that's what the journey has been like for me. And I just appreciate so much that you were willing to go on that journey so that you can accelerate people's journeys. And we're going to go ahead and put your link, um, your gift into the chat for everybody, because I want to make sure that nobody gets out without getting this. Um, yo, so tell us about the gift, this high vibration healing music. Tell, tell us about, is this from the original CD? This is from the second CD. Aha. This, this is a special piece because, well, it's entitled The Journey. And it's about the journey through life that we're all going on. It's about the journey of life that we all came here to play. I call it the cosmic game of hide and seek. You know, Ooh, that sounds here. like fun. Yeah, it is. In, in some ways, in some ways, not. It's like, you know, we come in here with all of our grandeur, all of our power, all of our unlimited potential, all of our divine essence. We're born and we promptly forget every single bit of it. And then you have these parents that say, oh, you're this way or that way or not good enough way or whatever way. And then you go to school and they say, well, if you memorize all this stuff on this piece of paper and put it over to this one and get none wrong, then you're OK. Then you're good enough. And then you get the um, media that says this is what a beautiful man or a beautiful woman is supposed to look like. And and, you know, and then we completely hide who and what we really are. And then at some point in our life. We come to this awakening where we go, wait a second, there's something more. And what showed up, as I just said, that is like Michelangelo being asked, how did you carve David? He said, I didn't carve David. I just removed the pieces that were hiding the masterpiece within the block of marble. And that 
is what happens after you have your awakening time is you start removing the pieces that are hiding the masterpiece that's already within us. It's already within each and every one of us. That might be the farthest thing that you believe right now, but I guarantee you that it's there. And that's when we start letting go of what's not the truth of who and what we are and start embodying new ways of being that are in alignment that we are these masterful expressions of life, of source energy, of God, of universe, whatever you want to call it. Insert there what you're comfortable with. But that's what we're all in the process of reclaiming. And if anything in this time is we're all being called to embody this on a whole nother level. So I kind of went a far ways from that piece the journey, but that's really what it's about, the journey through life. But it's a high vibration music track that, first of all, number one, will cause you to reduce stress. So when you tune the body's energy field, ah. you have an instant reduction of stress. You have an increase in your strength, flexibility, endurance, coordination, and balance. So your physical expression operates at a higher level. In fact, when you're in that state, you actually put the body into a state to self heal. You also shift um, brain waves. You improve your memory, your focus, you enhance your creativity, your intuition. You start accessing higher levels of intuition, of inner knowing, and um, actually open up to this. It's just like, take five minutes. You find yourself getting stressed out, push play, take some deep breaths. It'll shift your state. And you'll be able to let go maybe of what you need to let go of. You can bring in something that you need to bring in to help energize you, to help lift you up. So that's what it's really for. It's just a, it's just a really powerful tool that you can use at any time you find yourself, you know, maybe perhaps struggling a little bit, maybe perhaps feeling sad or angry or frustrated about something. Push play, breathe, set the intention to move through it. And you might even get some words of wisdom. You might even get some insight to help support you on your journey as you move forward. And that's why it's called The Journey. There we go. So the journey that we are on right now is nothing short of delightful, Mark, because being able to help people understand that your journey is just the same as anyone's journey who decides that they really are just like, questioning this, is this all there is? One of my clients says it this way, they, they picked it up from one of the, the sessions on the Emotional Teflon platform. There was a saying that popped up in front of them and it shook him right to his core because this saying was, I didn't come this far just to go this far. Mm. And that is so embodied in the work that you do, helping people make that step from, yes, you've come this far, but are you really done? There's more here if you want it. And many, many people don't get to the point of questioning. I mean, I'm, I was on the high side of 60 before that question showed up for me. And it's really challenging for me to go, um, oh, wow, you know, now I'm on purpose. Mm -hmm. And I highly recommend it. And it's not for the faint of heart because what I've had to work through to go from where I was starting from struggling yeah, I mean, I had all the evidence in the world that I was on the wrong path, but I wasn't seeing it as evidence that I was on the wrong path. I was seeing it as I just needed to hire another business coach. I just need to find another strategy. I just need to embrace another technology. There's, a, there's an answer. There's some secret to making my business work, and I just haven't found it. And the secret was that I was in the wrong business. Mm. And if you had told me that, two years ago, or even one year ago. Because one year ago, I was trying to do the mission in this little tiny box. <laughs> and you know, I was running the Woman Entrepreneur Show at the same time that I started the, team, the Suicide Prevention Show. 
And it only took one summit, one time of doing both of those that it was like, all right, I'm not going to do the woman entrepreneur show anymore. Not going to interview people about business, except as it, I figure it out over here. I'll just bring everybody over here. And I kept trying to pretend that I was working on the mission, but really I was still doing the entrepreneurial journey, still trying to build a business, still trying to fit into that mold. And it's, you know, the last six months, I, I did a whole year worth of these summits. I had interviewed over 120 different experts before I got it, that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. And that nothing else matters. This is how the message will get out into the world. This is how we'll save lives. This is how we'll reach out to people with our message. And our message is really simple. Everything you've ever heard about suicide prevention is wrong. That's our message. It's easier than that. Well, and I think that part of the shift, part of what's taking place on the planet right now is the reinvention of all the institutions that have been dealing with different challenges and issues that face humanity. It's like the old way of doing things is it's really becoming, it is obsolete, but it's becoming more and more aware. We're becoming more and more aware, even the mainstream, even people who aren't very connected are, whoa, wait a second, this needs to change. And obviously that, obsolete just came to my mind. It's becoming obviously yeah. obsolete. It's almost like there is so much light that's coming into the planet now that it's casting the light in the dark corners of the room, making everything known to everybody. And that's out of that, though, out of that experience is how we tap into another level of our genius, another level of our connectivity to unlimited resources, unlimited solutions, and to reinvent how we can cure something, how we can, you know, help to lift people above these issues that have been plaguing humanity for way too long, but realizing our own innate ability each of us has within us to create positive change and transformation on the planet. The solution isn't out there. It's within, within our own selves. And that's where we plug in. That's where we connect in. That's where we create from. That's where we compose from, to use musical terms, you know. So good stuff. It is. It's really good stuff. And the journey inward is probably the one that I hit the most resistance with. It was that moment that I'm like, it's inside me. You got the wrong person. You know, me, you cannot be talking about me. Do you know who I am? And it was only in that questioning and getting what you espouse so beautifully that who I am is just hidden. It's not who I think I am. Mm -hmm. And that was the message that resonated so strongly with me. And I just really... I, like I said, I'm go, we're going, Katie, make sure everybody gets the link again for, for the gift from Mark. And Mark, all right. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you a question. What's I that? remember now. I want to know what happened between the first CD and the second CD, The Journey. I got so caught up in what The Journey was all about that I almost forgot my question. What happened? How long was it between the first CD and the second CD? It was about four years between the two. And so interesting about how the first CD even came to fruition. I was in a high powered group mastermind business group. And very powerful woman would coach people in front of the room. And, you know, there'd be maybe 250 people in the audience. I mean, it's powerful. And back then it was like, it was in your face. It could be in your face coaching. If you got stubborn, it's like, break them down to build them up. Right. Some kind of philosophy like that. I remember that model. <laughs> I've, I, yes. Um, you, we actually had this conversation in, in one of the sessions about business coaches and bullying. Yes. Yes. Yep. And so. 
I had been in her group a year. I sent her a thank you card. And why just send a thank you card when you can send one with music, right? Two songs recorded live, you know, sent her a CD. That's how long ago. And so a couple months later, I'm up on stage. I'm ready to talk profit and loss strategies, sales strategies, whatever, man. I was prepared because I'm up on stage. And she asked the question, Mark, before I even have a chance to say anything, Mark, what are you doing with your music? I'm like going, oh my God, nothing. Then she got upset at me. She's like, oh, let me tell you something. There are people that can play. And then there are those that can play with their heart, passion, and soul. She goes, you have that ability. And furthermore, you're ripping off the world by not sharing it. I want you to come back with a CD for sale the next meeting or don't come back at all now. You can go sit down. I didn't even get a chance to argue or rebuff or anything. I dragged my carcass back to my seat and I invest a lot of money in this group. So I came back with a, you know, like a promo CD. I think it had six songs on it or something, which became that first album, you know, and it's like amazing how the universe will nudge us push us, sometimes shove us in directions that we would have never gone down, given the choice. I would have never gone down that path, never would have done it. But in that case, yeah, I'm going to go get, I'm going to go record six songs live, put them on a CD and I brought CDs to sell and people bought them and stuff. And then, okay, I guess I need to go to the next step and, you know, Let's go into the studio and make the album. And then that CD ends up getting the hands of a guy from NASA. And from there, I discover how music, energy healing, uh, created the sound healing technology that could help people deal with their emotional turbulence, help them to peel back the pieces that are hiding this masterpiece that's within each and every one of us. And as I mentioned earlier, it might seem the farthest away thing, but it's there just waiting to be discovered. Thank you, Mark, for bringing your music into the world and for being and bringing it into our mission. You know, I, I can't thank you enough. Together, we will change the world because the world's ready to change. I agree with you. There is something that has shifted and I think the world is ready to hear your music and my mission. So I'm just, it's a partnership and, and I just want to acknowledge that, that, that you have been very gracious to agree to work with me and to help move this all along faster. And well, thank you. I'm a believer. You know, I think I told you that in the very beginning. I'm a believer. I love what you're doing. I love what you're bringing forward. And, you know, what greater honor than to support people tapping into their genius to reinvent and bring forth new ways, new ways of being, new ways of doing things, new ways that are going to help elevate humanity. I mean, to me, that's like the creme of the creme as far as in fun life purpose stuff is to help people to shine their light because it certainly isn't political institutions. It's not the media. It's none of those institutions that are going to help us to accomplish this change. It's going to be each and every one of us being true to the music that's within. That's the light. That's the catalyst for transformation and change on the planet. So I honor you for everything you're bringing forward, your commitment, what you're doing, and uh, honored to be a part of this today. Thank you. So very, very much, Mark. My pleasure.